I talk about cognitive outs often as the greatest tool, one of the greatest tools, I don't like to use extreme language, um, that our subconscious mind has to get us to sometimes act seemingly illogical or irrationally, act short-sighted, right? Optimize for, for short-term um, pleasure and minimizing discomfort over the long-term approach. And I just had an instance with my son where I think it was an example of how to try and um, address cognitive outs. There's lots of different ways to do it, but, but one of the powerful ways, or at least maybe a starting point, is just to identify them, right? You, you need to let, to, to, to kind of make it in a, in a metaphorical way seem like a little bit of a competition or a battle you're in with your subconscious. You have to let your subconscious mind know that you're aware they're there. You may not be able to overcome them yet. You may not be able to stop your subconscious from using them. But I think the first step is letting it be known that like, hey, I know what's going on here. <laughs> I see what you're doing. And that'll set you down the path of it. So let me give you the kind of quick context of the situation with my son. Simple everyday situation. Um, we were sitting here uh, on a Sunday morning, just kind of hanging out. He was playing his video game. We were doing some stuff. Um, he wanted to watch TV. So it was at a point where I said, all right, you can watch some TV. So we had turned the TV on. We was just about to watch it. So he was fully in that mode. And my mother called, his grandmother, um, on FaceTime. And they were talking for about a minute, and he was making it very obvious that he did not want to be on the phone, right? He kept looking at me and looking at the TV, and he was being very short in his responses. Not fully rude, but but a little bit rude, um, to the point where she noticed it. She wasn't mad, and she said, you know, like, hey, what's going on? And he said, well, I was, I was getting ready to watch TV. And she said, oh, no problem, you know, go, go watch TV, do whatever. And he looked at me, and I kind of gave him a look where he knew, uh, you know, I'm not... I, uh, somewhat like I might get in trouble here or I'm not doing the right thing because I probably shouldn't be being short or rude to my grandmother because I want to watch TV, you know, that type of thing. And she said, listen, no big deal. Don't worry about it. And hung up the phone. So as he hung up, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know, because he knew or he had some sense he, he did the wrong thing. So I said to him, like, listen, explain to me what you mean when you say you're sorry without using the words you're sorry, right? Or sorry. <laughs> I want to understand what that means. Um, and I ask that question because it's in the spirit of what I always talk about, which is we, we do what we want to do. We follow some logic. So when he's telling me he's sorry, I want to understand because sorry implies like I shouldn't have done that. I made a mistake. I, I, I if, if I had the opportunity to do it again, I would do it differently. And I didn't believe that's what he actually meant. <laughs> I believed he did exactly what he wanted to do. So I asked him to do that. And he said, um, I know I shouldn't be rude to my grandmother just to watch a screen or to watch TV. You know, I know that's not the right thing to do. So I said, okay. I said, but, but you did it. <laughs> you know, you still did that thing. And that's what he went back to, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I say all this because to me, this, this is the cognitive out, right? This is the I'm sorry cognitive out. Um, he wanted to watch TV. He did not want to talk to his grandmother, right? That was the short term, maximize pleasure, minimize discomfort for him. He wanted to just get to the thing he wanted. Um, he knew, right? Consciously, he knew I, sh I, I shouldn't do that, right? I should talk on the phone for a few minutes, be polite, be nice, and then I'll get to watch TV. It'll be five minutes maybe, and I'll get to do it. But his subconscious kicked it. I, I want it now. I want it right now. Even though his conscious mind knew that's not the right thing to do. So when it all concluded, his subconscious took the cognitive out. It said, hey, be a little rude. You'll get TV sooner. And just say you're sorry. And then you're good, right? And, and mean it, right? You actually mean it. You know that's the wrong thing to do. Um, it's not like you're just saying those words. You know you did the wrong thing there. What happens, though, is when you look at that is you look at the math of it and it, it doesn't add up. It doesn't check out. If you knew that was wrong, if you knew you shouldn't have done that, then you would have not done it. You would not. You would have waited the five minutes. But you came to some calculation that said, I still want, right? The, 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 the benefit of me watching TV right now is too great, so I want it. And I'll use that apology as the cognitive out to, to, get, to kind of remove my guilt from it and, and feel like I'm okay and there's no problem. And truth be told, I don't think I fixed the situation in the, in the conversation we had. I don't think coming out of that, he now learned his lesson and he'll do things differently. But I do think back to the beginning of this video, at least he's aware of it and his subconscious mind is aware of it. And he, he kind of had that realization of like, I see what you're saying. I see the math doesn't check out. I know I shouldn't have done that, but I did it anyway because I wanted it more. I thought that was more important. And at least now he's aware that that apology he gave, he's aware what it really means, right? Not in a way of which like he was being intentionally malicious per se, but that subconsciously, and again, he doesn't even grasp that, but subconsciously he was saying sorry 
but it didn't mean what he thought it meant it meant right what it actually just meant was i i don't want to be in trouble for this um i know what i did was wrong but i did the other thing anyway and at least that's a starting point that's a starting point to send kind of a warning shot if you will to his subconscious of like hey these these games these tricks these tools these cognitive outs they're still there and you'll be able to use them but i'm on to them a little bit and the hope is as it always is is that the seed is planted and now that's ruminating in his mind in his subconscious perhaps even where it's got to grapple with that and understand like hey some of my tricks are being exposed so maybe this won't work as well as I hoped it would. Maybe as time goes on, he'll become smarter to it and wiser to it and realize the better approach and at least just become more aware of it. At least that's the hope.